Hare Krishna. Today we will discuss from uh, Srimad Ramayana, the Valmiki Ramayana. Ramayana is uh, also called Adi Kavya, the original uh, Kavya or uh, historical treatise literature uh, written by Valmiki Muni. Ramayana contains many lessons for humanity. It has the most amazing, wonderful pastimes of the Supreme Lord, uh, Lord Ramchandra. So, the culture, the culture of any society can be estimated by their standard of recreation and entertainment. In any society, how do people uh, find enjoyment? How do people, where do find, where do people find their enjoyment, and how do they entertain themselves? What are their means of recreation? That can give us an idea of the spiritual standard of any particular society or culture. So, in the Vedic culture, what was the standard? of recreation and enjoyment. The standard of recreation and enjoyment was that you know people would uh, congregate to hear about the pastimes of the Lord. Their recreation was to sing about the glories of the Lord, the name, the fame, pastimes and glories of the Supreme Lord. So in the villages people would come together and they would do some kirtans or bhajans. They would hear some Krishna katha or some Ram katha, and they would uh, uh, have dramas. They were also related to some uh, some episodes in Ramayana or Mahabharat or Bhagavatam. So in this way, their standard of recreation and entertainment was, you know, spiritual. You know, to have some uh, God conscious. Krishna conscious uh, kind of entertainment. Now, this sort of entertainment not only uh, you know gave some recreation and uh, entertainment to the mind, but it also uplifted the soul. It actually uh, gave enlightenment along with enjoyment. But whereas the modern standard of uh, recreation is completely different. How do people today enjoy, find enjoyment in life. To enjoy, they probably they go to, to watch a movie or they watch their TVs or they go to these pubs, you know, where they just uh, get drunk and dance, you know. So this is how the standard of enjoyment has changed. So the standard of recreation and entertainment gives a glimpse of what are the spiritual values what are the moral values? What are the standards of acceptable behavior? And what are their, their modes of thinking and outlook towards life? All this can be estimated by you know the kind of the form of entertainment that we all have. So as we can see, the modern uh, methods of entertainment are extremely degrading to the soul. You know, so when you uh, go to any of these places like cinema halls or pubs or theatres and uh, places like these, there is hardly any God consciousness. All that uh, you know, those forms of enjoyment give us is titillation of the mind. You know? They are just encouraging us you know, to become more lusty you know? and they increase our envy, greed and in fact even at a very young age we train our kids what what do people what do the parents generally give the kids for entertainment? Some kind of video games, probably, where the kids are taught to you know shoot this guy, shoot that guy, you know, violence. So this is the kind of entertainment. This is the standard of enjoyment and entertainment that we unfortunately have in today's society. So therefore, it is very important for us to revive that Vedic culture, that culture of spiritual entertainment which is not only satisfying to the mind, very pleasing to the ears and eyes and to the senses, 
but also very uplifting and nourishing to our souls. So that is Vedic culture. So yes, we can find that in Ramayana. In Ramayana we have three distinct cultures. First we have the culture of Lanka, the Rakshasa culture, where satisfying the lust, satisfying lust, greed, anger and your ego is given paramount importance. Ravana, for him, satisfying his lust was the most important thing in life. He didn't care if Sita was married to Lord Rama, if she, Sita was a wedded wife of someone else, uh, through some very devious means, you know, the garb of a sadhu, he actually kidnapped Sita. And even though he knew that his entire kingdom, his family, everything was at stake, Lord Ram is the Supreme Lord, you know, he would definitely die in the hands of Lord Ram, but still he was unwilling to give up his lust. And he wasn't even willing to hear the advice of his near and dear family members and friends. So his ego was so prominent in life, you know. Yes, I want what I, I want. So that is the philosophy of Lanka, or that is the culture of Lanka. And he kidnapped many such women. And then you have the culture of Kishkindha, the uh, Vanara culture or the monkey culture. The Vanara culture is like, you know, as a, as a monkey is always unsteady. A, a monkey is always fickle and fickle minded. You know, it doesn't stay at one place. Similarly, their culture is also like, you know, very unsteady kind of culture. Sometimes, yes, they are very pious and dharmic. And at other times, they are, you know, they could be, uh, they could forget it all and they could become an adharma. Wali, uh, the brother of Sugriva, he was actually a very kind brother. He shared his kingdom and everything with Sugriva. But when he had this doubt, you know, when somehow he felt that Sugriva probably wanted to kill him and occupy his throne, immediately he became so envious of Sugriva that he wanted to kill him and he even kidnapped his wife, Roma. So that is the culture of Kishkina. And uh, so, but, but then even in the case of Sugriva you can say, so you can see that how Sugriva, he promised Lord Ram that he would help him find Sita, you know, if he uh, got rid of Wali. And when Lord Ram killed Wali and installed Sugriva on the throne, he forgot all about his promise and he was completely immersed in his enjoyment. But then Lord Ram sent Lakshmana to remind him. And when Lakshmana threatened him that you will be punished if you don't remember your promise, if you don't fulfill your promise, that's when he comes back to his senses. So yes, the Kishkinda culture is of unsteadiness. Sometimes dharma and sometimes adharma. And finally you have the culture of uh, Ayodhya where you know you are firmly fixed under any circumstances you would never deviate from dharma so that is the culture of Ayodhya. So Lord Ram himself is a perfect example of this. If you see Lord Ram's life in the Ramayana it is an absolute disaster. Lord Ram, he was, you know, from his birth, you know, of course, for, for the first 12 years, everything seemed to be okay. But then the disaster struck one after the other. Uh, he had to kill many demons. He had to fight with many demons while protecting Vishwamitra. And he also lost his kingdom. I mean, his father wanted him to be the king. All the ministers, all the people, citizens of Ayodhya, they all wanted him to be the king. And even his mothers, even Kaikeyi wanted him to be the king. He loved her more than his own, her own son, Bharata. But then things changed. Her character changed due to some circumstances. And then he had to lose everything overnight. Imagine you were going to be coronated the next morning and then 
you are you have to leave and lord ram was you know obviously he was very f- firmly fixed in dharma so he accepted that but then what was painful to his heart was that you know sita and lakshmana they chose to also accompany him to the forest sita who never you know even uh, even the sun rays could not touch i mean since she was not exposed to even severe heat uh, she was always dressed in the, in the most luxurious ornaments so sita you know who was so uh, he was she was brought up in such extreme luxury today she has to uh, dress in very uh, uh, ordinary clothes and she had to walk over thorns and pebbles in the forest and those days forest was not like just like a picnic spot or something it was full of ferocious wild animals and many rakshasas so the point is that lord rama was feeling all this so some people asked this question yes lord rama because he was the supreme lord he was god of course he was an incarnation of god so therefore yes he could go through all those troubles and still follow dharma but we are ordinary souls how can we do that that is definitely the difference between god and ordinary human beings we are ordinary human beings bound by karma but ram of course is the supreme lord but then uh, the ramayana gives an angle to this question ramayana tells us that uh, uh, lord ram although yes he is an incarnation of the supreme lord no doubt about that but then he also had this human side to him he felt all the emotions and he also uh, experienced life as an ordinary human being yeah so the point is that uh, lord ram is so perfectly uh, he is such a perfect example of, of an ideal human being not only by his behavior but also by his experience in other words he ha- he had human like experience he felt all those human agonies in life just like we do when he was exiled to the forest you know the ramayana explains how he had these feelings obviously that you know sita and lakshman had to suffer because of him you know but he had to put a smiling face in front of all the citizens the citizens of ayodhya who decided to follow him to the forest and they were accompanying him he forbade them to go with him but then they decided that we don't want to stay in a kingdom where you are not present so we want to be with you so they all traveled with him into the forest and in the middle of the night he had to kind of secretly escape with uh, lakshmana and uh, sita so at that time he was wondering he was feeling you know on one side he was feeling the pain of the citizens and he himself was in pain because obviously he had to leave the kingdom and uh, he was in one sense indirectly responsible for even lakshman and sita's misery so he was dealing with all these feelings it's not that he, he didn't have the human experience and also uh, when he lost sita at that time he was like crying in extreme agony just like any ordinary human being who might be attached to his wife so it shows you know how uh, lord ram it's not that uh, you know he didn't have or he didn't have the experiences of ordinary souls yes he had all those experiences but despite those feelings he always chose to be fixed on the path of dharma so that is the lesson for ramayana so yes that is what we need to teach the young generation and that is how we are going to build a bright future for this nation and for the world by imparting these lessons these lessons should be on the curriculum for the kids for the children and also for the adults so uh, lord ram another beautiful lesson that we learn from the ramayana is how lord ram is uh, so virtuous and he gives shelter to even anyone 
who sought shelter to him. And this is a beautiful lesson for all aspiring devotees. When Vibhishana, the brother of Ravana, he sought shelter from Lord Ram. At that time, all the counselors, all the leaders of the Banar army of Lord Ram, they all advised Lord Ram not to um, give shelter to Vibhishana. Lord Ram sought counsel always and uh, they all advised him, most of, most, of, most of them advised him not to give shelter to Vibhishana. Why? Because yes, of course, he is the brother of Ravana. He could be a spy. Uh, he could try to create some internal conflicts among, among us. And uh, he could cause great trouble. But at that time, Lord Ram, after hearing from everyone, of course, Lord Hanuman advised Lord Ram that yes, we could give him shelter. Because he felt that uh, he could see that vision was genuinely sincere and surrendered to Lord Ram. He could make that out from his uh, body language, from his uh, way of speech and all that. But then finally Lord Ram gave his verdict. Uh, he, there's a beautiful verse in the Valmik Ramayana. It says, uh, Sakradeva prapannaya tava smiti chayachate abhayam sarvabhutebhyo dadamye tadvratammama he says that Sakrudeva Prapannaya, that means even if someone takes shelter of me, even once, he surrenders to me. And then, Tavasmi Iti Chayachate, that means he says that I am yours. Uh, and then Lord Ram says that, you know, I give him shelter. Even if he may be a, an Asura, a Rakshasa, or any, uh, he may belong to any species, even an animal or anyone who takes shelter of me, even once, I give him shelter. Uh, he says, Abhayam sarva bhute bhyo. I, I give him protection. Abhayam. Dadami etat vratam mama. It, this is my vow that I give protection to such people. And he goes on to say that even if that person may forget me, even if that person may forget that he has taken shelter of me, but I am not going to forget that he has taken shelter. So, so that is a very hope giving verse for devotees that you know, if we take shelter of the, Lord, of the Lord, even once, the Lord is not going to give, give up on us. But then the question may be raised, that then why are we uh, still struggling with Maya? Why is it that we are not free from clutches of Maya, although we have taken shelter of Krishna? This is like saying, there is a nice saying that one person, he was holding on to a tree, he was embracing this tree very tightly and he was shouting, save me, save me, this tree has caught hold of me, just save me, leave me. So, so it's very stupid because Actually, it's not that the tree has caught hold of him, it is he who caught hold of the tree. Similarly, we actually are firmly clinging on to Maya, uh, but uh, we, we pretend as if it's Maya who has uh, caught hold of us. Actually, it's the other way around. Some people even tell me that uh, when we invite people to come to the temple, we tell them, please come to our temple, attend the satsang programs, you know. They, they say that, you know, we will come when the Lord calls us. Bhagavan jab bulayenge tab hum aayenge. That means, we will come when the Lord wills. But actually, uh, this is like the same uh, person who is actually holding on to this tree and saying, the tree is not leaving me. The Lord is always inviting us. The Lord's doors are always open for us. The Lord says, even He may forget me, but I won't forget Him. One who surrenders to me even once. Uh, but it, the problem is that we do not want to take shelter of Him. We have said that once, but then we still have hopes 
you know to enjoy this material world so the moment we get frustrated and we come back to take shelter of the lord the lord is always open to give us shelter and so this is a very beautiful lesson from the ramayana and there are of course many many wonderful lessons that can be learned and uh, this is a uh, an introductory video we are going to have katha uh, about lord ram in the next 3 days and uh, we'll do it in three parts so please stay with us and please subscribe to our channel and share these videos like and share these videos uh, to uh, whomever you feel fit thank you all very much जय श्री राम हरे कृष्ण